some monster ballads? It's time for the ultimate experience. Welcome to One Hit Wonderland, where we look at the careers of bands and artists known for only one song. And today, we're going to prove that every bad boy has a sensitive side. Yes, for this episode, we're going way back to look at one of the biggest power ballads from the era where the boys of glam rock ruled the world by living up to the dream of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's right, we're going back to the 90s. These guys were known by the laughably ambitious title of Mr. Big. They, uh, broke late, let's say. But make no mistake, had they been introduced earlier on, they could very well have lived up to their name, but little did they know that by the time they broke out, they were already relics of a bygone era. Their acoustic ballad, To Be With You, was a humongous number one smash at the beginning of 1992, but if you weren't around at the time, I can't say it would surprise me if you'd never heard of this song ever. Even when Mr. Big was at their Mr. Biggest, their brand of hairsprayed cock rock was already tragically behind the times. So how did a rock band riding a definitively 80s brand of coolness notch a giant hit in the era of Pearl Jam? Well, we're gonna find out. Behold, Hair Metal's final hurrah, tonight on One Hit Wonderland. The story of Mr. Big, as does the story of all hair metal, begins with Van Halen. Bass player Billy Sheehan got the break of a lifetime when his small local band from Buffalo, Talus, got to open for Van Halen on their Party Till You Die tour in 1980. Talis never got big, but Sheehan must have made a big impression because when David Lee Roth finally got fired in 1984, Sheehan was the first person to get invited to join Roth's backing band for his solo projects. Sheehan quit Talis that day and never looked back. Sheehan played with the David Lee Roth band alongside guitar legend Steve Vai for two albums before getting sick of the slicked up pop direction Roth was heading. Also, anyone who has to spend more than a week with David Lee Roth wants to murder him. I, I have to imagine that was a factor. Anyway, Sheehan started recruiting a new band. He found a singer in Eric Martin, who led the Eric Martin band in the early 80s without much success. You can see him here looking all of 15 years old. Sheehan also recruited Paul Gilbert, an Yngwie Malmsteen style neoclassical metal guitarist from the highly respected underground band Racer X. And they were rounded out by drummer Pat Torpy, who at the time was the latest drummer for The Knack. So, Mr. Big was like a supergroup of people that weren't famous. Uh, a less than supergroup. Now, I want to make clear that this new band had serious chops. Hair metal bands, despite technically still being metal bands, couldn't always say that. I think like three-fourths of Poison was hired from a modeling agency or something. But Mr. Big knew their stuff. Sheehan was Guitar Magazine's bass player of the year for like five years in a row. They, they called him the Eddie Van Halen of bass. But despite being a highly skilled band that could form like 900 different varieties of shred, they didn't just want to do guitar wankery, they wanted to actually you know, write songs. So, their debut self-titled album from 1989 wasn't just guitar solos, which honestly maybe it should have been, because this album did nothing. It did absolutely nothing. I can't honestly say that Mr. Big, despite their extreme metal superpowers, were particularly good songwriters. Plus, naming your band Mr. Big is just tempting fate anyway. Also, 1989 did not need more hair metal. There were so many other new bands coming out that year that they had to compete against, including Skid Row, Warrant, Enough is Enough, Faster Pussycat, Bane, Shotgun Messiah, Dangerous Toys, Danger Danger, Bang Tank. Oh my god, are these all real bands? I had to have made one of those up. Bang Tank. Undeterred, Mr. Big recorded his second album in 19... Hold on a second, I'm missing bands here. Pretty Boy Floyd, Junkyard, Shark Island, Cats in Boots. The 80s, everybody. Anyway, they hoped for better from their second album in 1991, apparently unaware that the sand was shifting beneath their feet. Here is their first single from that album, a tribute to the 60s that sounds absolutely nothing like the 60s.
I can speak from experience here. Listen to this song twice and it will be in your head forever. Right around the time they released that song, a little album called Nevermind was also climbing the charts. Clearly, Mr. Big, we're never going to make it big. <laughs> Okay, as much as I like to pretend that grunge changed everything overnight, things never really happened that neatly. Old school hard rock was not dead. In 1992, Van Halen, Aerosmith, and Guns N' Roses were still some of the biggest names in rock. And in 1991, one of the biggest hits was another acoustic guitar song from a previously unknown metal band. So there was still room for a Mr. Big, albeit not for much longer. But what about the song itself? Well, I'm on record as not particularly liking white guys with acoustic guitars, but I think this one has its charms. Just to be the next to be with you. Nice harmonies, guys. One of the best things about it is how simple it is. It's, it's not really a ballad. The band described it as more of a campfire song, which is true enough. Besides, most white guys with acoustic guitar don't really have the skills to pull off an awesome acoustic solo. Quite frankly, lead singer Eric Martin kind of strikes me as the weak link of the group. Sheehan may have been the Van Halen of bass, but Martin, uh, you, you wouldn't know David Lee Roth. He doesn't particularly strike me as metal enough for his band. I mean, he looks like Tiffany. Look at him. But to be with you is probably the best use of his talents. I believe he means it when he tries to prove how much love he feels. And, Trust me, if you actually listen to those 80s hair ballads, most of them blow. One thing I can definitely say for Mr. Big, they never remind me of Warrant or Winger or any of the other late 80s backwash of metal. Apparently this is an old song. Eric Martin wrote it when he was just a teenager, and uh, you can tell. I love it. Your game of love was rained out. That is some primo 17-year-old mangled metaphor right there. Like, the rest of the song is about how he can be the only one forever and ever, but uh, he, he just wants to be the next guy to be with her. Apparently, she's just got this line of guys, and he just wants to jump a few spots ahead. In fact, he literally mentions the line of dudes in the lyrics. Of course, he's quick to point out that if people are giving her shit about it, it shouldn't matter. That's actually a really nice sentiment. I'd like that. Key change! The implication of the song, too, is not only will this singer not be this girl's first, he also won't be her last. He seems to just want to be lucky enough to spend just a little time with her at all. It, it's, it's like he realizes how fleeting love can be before you get forgotten for the next one that comes along. This is a metaphor for their career. It should be really obvious to everybody why Mr. Big did not have a second hit. It was 1992. High-pitched, squealy vocals and immediately, immediately me guitar solos were not the end thing anymore. The fact that they had a hit at all is the amazing part, not that they didn't follow it up. That said, they did have two other low-charting singles in the top 40. The first is another love song. It's okay. The other is a cover of Cat Stevens' Wild World. Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world. I cannot really judge this one objectively because I have never, ever been able to even remotely tolerate Cat Stevens. And after that, America just completely forgot about Mr. Bungle or whoever the hell they were. They did kind of try to change with the times, I guess. This is Take Cover. I would say it's probably the best song. It's from 1996. I A little less 80s than their other stuff. I mean, if you listen to it with different ears, you can say it's not that different from Soundgarden, right? 
Yeah, who am I kidding? You feel bad for Mr. Big? Don't. They did fine. See, this is the thing. For pretty much their entire career, from their first album up to the present day, Mr. Big were absolutely huge in Japan. Yeah, Spinal Tap style. I cannot emphasize this enough. Germans don't even love David Hasselhoff as much as Japan loves Mr. Big. Or as they call them over there, Big Son. They toured in Japan like a billion times. They have like seven different live albums that they recorded in Japan. They have a song called I Love You Japan. I think I can say definitively that the popularity of Mr. Big is the weirdest thing about Japan. All the members of the band released a few solo albums too, which were mostly popular in Japan. Gilbert left the band in 1997 and they broke up for good in 2002. But they've done a few reunion tours in the past couple years, mostly in Japan. They released another album in 2011 and they're still touring today. Also, Billy Sheehan, I understand, is like a legend among bass players, so there's that. I guess, yeah, yeah. Like I said, their biggest problem was that they were kind of weak songwriters. If they could have solved that, they could legitimately have had a strong, long-lasting career Well, Oh wait, the 90s. <laughs> what am I talking about? There's no way they could have sustained a career in that decade. Not stateside, at least. That said, they survived and thrived through a decade that really should have crushed them like bugs, so I don't, I don't really feel bad for them either. There's no doubt that they were a very talented ensemble, and if you're into guys who can like, really play, man, they'd be a good band to check out. Above all, unlike many of their peers, they did not strike me as posers or idiots. They never really got big, but if they called themselves Mr. Pretty Solid for a hair metal band, I would agree with that. Mr. Big, of all the hair bands, they were the last to be with you. And I think they made a good send-off for the genre. Rock on.